Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over what you should know and what you should be able to do in the introduction topic for the Higher Physics course. Now if you want to download your own copy of the Learning Outcomes document that we're about to go through, then check out my website mrmitchellphysics.co.uk and you can download your own free copy there within the Higher Physics section of the website. Let's get started. So first of all, if we look at the learning outcomes for units, prefixes and scientific notation, you can see that we have to use SI units appropriately. So remember that just means using seconds for time, it means using kilograms for mass instead of just grams, and it also means using meters for distances or lengths. Use the prefixes pico, nano, micro, milli, kilo, mega, giga and tera appropriately. So you need to be able to replace these prefixes with their given number in scientific notation. So pico, remember, was times 10 to the minus 12, Nano is times 10 to the minus 9, Micro is times 10 to the minus 6, Milli times 10 to the minus 3, Kilo times 10 to the positive 3, Mega times 10 to the power of 6, Giga times 10 to the power of 9, and lastly Terra was times 10 to the power of 12. Moving on, you need to be able to use scientific notation appropriately. So what this means is, if your calculator spits out a large number with lots of zeros for example, then you need to be able to write down that number in scientific notation. So most final answers should be written in scientific notation to an appropriate number of decimal places or significant figures, which takes us on to the next point. So it says here, use the appropriate number of significant figures in final answers. This means that the final answer can have no more significant figures than the value with the least number of significant figures used in the calculation. Next, looking at uncertainties, you need to know of scale reading, random and systematic uncertainties in a measured quantity, so you need to know how to define all of those. You also should know that all measurements of physical quantities are liable to uncertainty, which should be expressed in absolute or percentage form. So when we're writing down final uncertainties, we should be writing them down in absolute form or percentage form. Scale reading uncertainty, you should know, is an indication of how precisely an instrument scale can be read. You should also know that the random uncertainties arise when measurements are repeated and slight variations occur. Random uncertainties may be reduced by increasing the number of repeated measurements. You should also be able to use an appropriate relationship to determine the approximate random uncertainty in a value using repeated measurements. So remember to calculate random uncertainty, we take the maximum value, subtract the minimum value and divide it by the number of values in total. Or you could write it down like this for short using capital R, so delta R is equal to R max minus R min over N. Another definition here that you need to know is systematic uncertainties occur when readings taken are either all too small are all too large. This can arise due to measurement techniques or experimental design. Another outcome is relating to the mean here and it says that the mean of a set of repeated measurements is the best estimate of the true value of the quantity being measured. When systematic uncertainties are present, the mean value will be offset. When mean values are used, the approximate random uncertainty should be calculated. So remember, you're often going to see questions asking you to calculate the mean from a set of readings and then work out the random uncertainty. You should also be able to use uncertainties in data analysis appropriately. And the last outcome here refers to combination uncertainties and it says that when an experiment is being undertaken and more than one physical quantity is measured, the quantity with the largest percentage uncertainty should be identified and this may often be used as a good estimate of the percentage uncertainty in the final numerical result of an experiment. The numerical result of an experiment should then be expressed in the form final value plus or minus the uncertainty. So remember, if we're using percentages, you don't really need to use brackets, but if you're writing down your value with the uncertainty in absolute form, you might use brackets for that. So all this is saying is what we saw when we did combination uncertainties. So we saw that if we've got several variables with uncertainties, then we need to determine the uncertainties in all of those variables first in percentage form, and then we just choose the largest percentage uncertainty to be the uncertainty in our final result. That's all for this video guys, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.